Hello and welcome to my new Let's Play of European of Us 4. Been on a bit of a hiatus, haven't really been in the mood to play. Now I'm going to come back and end up just playing one of the easiest nations in the game. Have a look. So, I'm going to be playing the Ottomans mainly to try and establish... Well, my objectives is to grow even larger than the original Ottoman Empire. Set that to that. Or the actual historical Ottoman Empire, and oh boy. Now, I haven't really played all that much. I've tried playing a few smaller nations during my downtime, really, but just haven't felt very entertained. Now, as the Ottomans, I will be a pretty significant nation throughout the game. There's the Genesis and all that and all that. And I'm going to have to deal with those. I've also got a new microphone during my time down. And they do intend to at least, hopefully, in this playthrough, get an achievement or two. So, a few things I can start off with. I'm sort of more of a person to convert everything as well. That gives n local national manpower, and I can do it straight away. But I'm not sure if that can bring on something else to occur later. But I'm going to take all the decisions. I have to own roads. The other one is that one. Which gives me just a claim on that. So, starting route general is very good. Two star. Brilliant. Now, I can't convert everything immediately. And is the dimmy stick? Yep, the dimmies have things. That's not good. Though, the dimmy do have a fair few things they can do. Which I guess is an advantage, but in all honesty, I want to be the sort of entirely religiously unified nation. I should really organise my map modes a bit better, but oh well. So what do the Dimmy own? Yumara. Merchant guilds, Yumara. The Dimmy control all of this in Greece. Uh, Dimmy do have a fair few things. I can definitely get a... I believe it is... Now, force limit, 30,000. Oh yeah, I should also set rivals. Who's rivaled me? Well, Byzantium, I'm going to do them, obviously, so I can kill them. I think I'll uh, rival the Timurids, since they're assholes. And I really do not like the Timurids, because most of the time I play in the Middle East, they somehow do something to annoy me. And the Mamluks, so pretty much downright regular guys. So, I'm going to go with armies of 14,000 early on that will easily transition into my later game armies. So, 10-4, which well, with when cannons unlock, we'll go to 10-4-6. And we'll further go on later on. Now, can I now declare on you? Not quite. Now, I will be transferring my capital to Constantinople at the moment I can. Now, I can convert a few areas already. The only ones I cannot convert are dimmy areas. And you scoop for its non-accepted culture. But that is a barely unaccepted. I could easily take humanist and just tank through... Let's see. What does humanist do again? So, religious unity, brilliant. Local traditions, brilliant. That is brilliant. Brilliant? Even better brilliant. And 
Yep, that's good, and that is brilliant. And the idea cost at the end is just stunning if you take it early game. So I'm going to take that as my first idea group almost certainly. I'm not going to bother converting anything. Now, if there's anything I do not really like about the game as of recent, it's one thing, and that is the estates. I just... I just don't really like them. Like, they just feel like an absolute drag. I'll merge the army and build up a few merchant ships, because I'll be using those to patrol the area, even though I won't need them later on. I can use them then in other roles. Now, let's see. I'm going to want to probably push into Europe aggressively. Namely, take over Albania and Serbia early on. You have no allies, I'm going to kill you before s the Venetians can. Now, they have an even better leader 555 five, five versus a 3331. But. He's going to be going up against some of the best starting troops in the game. So while he can do pretty good, he's still going to get squished. Now, I don't need another leader, do I? I can just go and kill Constantinople now. Now, ooh, let's see. Athens may be a bit of an annoyance, but there's a fort there. They can't progress beyond here. But, uh, let's see. I'll leave it for the time absolutely being. Get all of these guys built and send them to here, so they do not accidentally get squished. Then I will declare that war. Humanist ideas, since it will be my first. <laughs> well, isn't that brilliant there? Now, I'll focus on uh, gaining Anatolia, since that will actually be quite crucial. I'll begin with Dolkadir and Ramazan. Now, there's a fort down here, I believe. Yep, there is. So, I'll probably send down the leaderless army. But, since the leader army is nearer, I will declare on them now and take this over. Now, even if I am a leaderless army, I have a good old number advantage over them, and they're going to be caught. I do get a crossing penalty, it seems. They do actually have a rather nice leader for themselves, but ah, oh well. They get squished either way and crushed. Now Constantinople is going to be under siege for quite some time. Udine's not going to need a fort once I have Constantinople. And the one here is not exactly the best placed one, I guess. Now, Dokadur is not too much of a threat, I think. Nor is Ramazan. Have they got any allies? No. All that is also Sunni, so it'll be a bit easier to swallow before I even get my humanist ideas. So, considering I'm going to be mainly conquering cores, my admin tech shouldn't be too badly influenced. For the start, anyway. Diplotech might be slowed a little. Now, do I have a core on Athens? No, I do not have a core on any of these three provinces. I do have a claim on Constantinople, but... Hmm. Since I don't have a claim on any of these, I could probably have got one if I sent a diplomat to fabricate there and such, but uh, I made a mistake. I'll deal with it. Now, if there's going to be one person that's going to be an issue later on, I think, it's going to be the QQ and the Timurids, at first at least, because they'll have horde units, which are, I think, the only units stronger in Anatolian and Muslim units at the start. You will have that siege done soon, hopefully this turn. Yes, we go. Here we go. 
So I can conk out Albania and say, you're mine. Now, I could take their money, but money's not going to be a concern for me, and inflation would just be an annoyance. So I can conquer Athens with relatively little challenge, I think. Oh my, they actually killed a ship. That is very rude of you. I am highly and deeply offended. <laughs> Whatever will I do? Oh, they got a breach wall in Constantinople. It might actually fall before these down here. If I'm lucky. Now, let's see. The historical Ottoman Empire did manage to push very far into Europe. Actually, inflation... I'm not sure. I'm a bit conflicted over certain things there. But either way, they... I mean, they even pushed all the way to Wien, which would, in-game, give me a free westernization decision, so it's definitely should not c consider it lightly if I want to go that way. Also, since this is how I prefer to play... Let's see, wait for this to load up. Root Corruption I'm going to put to max. Oh, uh, it only lasts five years in your one province. It won't hurt too much. Now, Byzantium and Athens, once they're conquered, will be... Now, that will cost a deal to call, which is a bit of a pain, but ah oh well. I do not want Venice to grab any of it. And you are becoming quite the annoyance, but they cannot go any further without that fort stopping them. Now, in all honesty, as the Ottomans, I have little interest in Europe, but I would want to take out Serbia and Bosnia before they can be dealt with by their Western powers, as each bit of power in my hands is better than having it in anyone else's. But first of all, let's focus on killing these and uniting Anatolia. Now, after that, I'll see what mission I get after the City of the World's Desire. I am almost certainly going to say it is either going to be kill Rhodes, or it's going to be one that involves going to the Balkans, namely Serbia or Valachia, or it's going to be a Mamluk mission. Now, if it is a Mamluk mission, I am going to want to build my navy up a little more than it already is, due to the fact that there is a combat width for naval combat and such now. I think it's 27, but it might change further on into the game. So you cannot stand there easily. You can stand most... Well, that is a poorly developed province, and so on and so on. Now, that crushed to them, I can take these back, travel to Achia, so on, so on. Though he will do the Siege of Maria, I guess. Since that will make it a little faster and a little easier. Serbia is making claims in me. Serbia, are you suicidal? You're a little bit of an idiot if you're doing that. Now, Caraman has a truce with me. Dokadur does not. Nor does Ramazan. They will not surrender now. Now, the decision to move my capital to Constantinople will likely occur. once I have annexed it. I will conquer a cheer, prevent them building anything there and being an annoyance. Then I'll send you over to here since I think even with a leader 14,000 should beat 6,000 even if they have a great leader. And these are only highlands not mountains so that should make it a little easier as well to attack. Once you have a cheer taken, I shall be heading over. I need to kill you. Now, I'm being a bit aggressive, and my manpower might dwindle a little for being this aggressive. 
But I am surviving, and I have just killed the rest of the Byzantine navy, which is very light, nice. So that is being sieged over there. Send you back down, speed it up, please. Now, thinking about things here, Kandar, you're not doing anything. Trebizond is actually on not core of mine. Hopefully Crimea does not do anything with them. If they do, I might get a little annoyed. They didn't. Now, QQ is going to be a threat. To them, at least. I'm going to want to conquer them and these guys quickly to prevent QQ grabbing the land. But even higher priorities prevent the Mamluks expanding here. They are a militaristic ruler, so that is actually compounded a little further. So I will declare for those provinces, and I am actually going to slow down the game speed a little to keep up a little better. Now, that's a level 1 fort. I'll just have to kill that army, split the army in two, go here. Then I can send 7k... Actually, it depends on the size of their military here. I only have to drop off 3,000 infantry here. That leaves me with 11,000 against 5,000. That is still a highly capable battle to win. You are going to fall soon. You did not get squished. That is surprising. I will guarantee your squish then. There we go. And he's not going to build a unit before I siege the province down. So I can just leave you there. Did lose a bit more manpower and I do have to watch it. So I'm going to probably kill these two. Then quite possibly a Q. And Trebizond. Then again, I do have a call on them, so I am going to want to fight them at some point. And historically, the Ottoman Empire controlled this entire region. I'm gaining a state down here, I'm completing my capital state, and there are other things I can do. Oops, I made a mistake, I should not have been paying that little attention. Well, it's a one stack, so it should be squished. So let's see, do I gain a new decision to move my capital there? I just have to make it, I have to enter peace. So this will make Constantinople the capital and so on and so on. So I only have to call these three down here and lower the autonomy in these three. Not lower, higher the autonomy in these three. I do not have to worry about the province itself. Now that means I'm going to want to go to peace pretty soon. And I can just do this to get the leader over here a little faster for the siege. Move you there. Teleport the leader right over. Put you back on there. It was leaderless anyway, so it doesn't matter. And boom. Now I think I will go for Trebizond next. It's an Orthodox Pontic province. Wait, do you have that was bronze or gold? Bronze. Or no, a copper, isn't it? Bronze is a Alloy, not a bloody... I'm an idiot. Don't mind that, you didn't hear any of that. Either way, I can go and speed 5 for a little even. I'll go to peace briefly before I declare on these two. Or in particular, Ramazon. This means I'll actually have a tiny bit of time to recover some manpower. And I'm going to want to get my navy down here. I can put in tech to repair. So I'm actually uniting Anatolia pretty quickly, which is very nice. Now this will become a state, I think. It's going to be quite close to my capital. 
it's going to be healthy for me. I think all of this over here is already a state of mine, bar Dolkadu and the Aleppo state there. So you will be done soon. <laughs> Got a fabricator claim here. So this will be increasing my force limit and manpower and all sorts of stuff very quickly on. As these are all cores, there'll be little autonomy, not autonomy, a little bit of stuff. But either way, I think there's a few achievements I can go for here. Like the decent reserve is actually within possibility for them. A pile of gold, not certain on. Mercantilism, unlikely. Aggressive expander is possible though. Or your trade, not going to happen probably. I'm not going to be forming Arabia, and I could go exploration or colonization, but that's extremely unlikely. Blackjack have 21 different subjects. <laughs> 25 sub. 21 subjects. No. So, I'll be going on for a little longer. That I could possibly do if there's a big war at some point, and they most likely will. Not going to have either of those. In City of Cities, I might develop a Constantinople to go for that. Cold War, unlikely to happen at any point. Defender of the Faith, I could become. And should I go for this? I don't really want to go for like stuff like this. But I could, if I wanted. And there's a chance this could happen if I'm unlucky. Now I don't view really use states or oh that ended probably pretty recently. There's very little aggressive expansion from it. So now I can move my capital to Constantinople. And gain a free core there. So that means all cultures of this type, Turkish, Syrian, Mashriki, Mashriku, uh, I'm not sure, Mashriki, I'm not sure how that would be pronounced, Egyptian, Syrian, Turkish, Bed, basically I can take all of Saudi Arabia and all the culture there is accepted, I can take all of Egypt, culture is accepted, most of the culture in Mes Mesmapoti, I can't remember how these things are pronounced, okay, region, Mashriki, area, subcontinent, near east, continent, I, I don't know. Yeah, I can't pronounce many of the names, sorry about that. So, that means now, I'm going to be killing Ramazan, since I need to gain this little bit of land. Time to fabricate on you. I can stop building the spy network now, and I can go and declare war on them briefly. Ooh, did they ally? Ooh, wait. What is this about? Ah, oh, you were guaranteeing his independence, were you? I should have made you a co belligerent if that was the case. Because <sighs> you don't have any allies either, now I'm going to have to. That's an issue. I should have paid a bit more attention there. That's my fault. Big mistake. Big old mistake on my half. So, time to go out and deal with you then, I guess. Hopefully, this will not cause me to take a ton of aggressive expansion, since I'll still be taking calls. You might have still had the truce with me, that's the only issue. If so, though, I will probably try and take Icel. A, since that is a fort, B, since that prevents the Mamluks from fabricating on his only province that has a possibility for him to do so, and declaring on him. Now, I really should put the leader on that army. Should, but I haven't. And, you know what, I'm going to try and at least use the estates. Yumeira. Don't need that. Could gain that. Uh, I'm not really sure. 
So, oh yeah, I want to go down to a slower speed for that. Now, let's see, Adana is going to be pretty much killed. So, I've taken that out, just need to go and begin sieging all of this now. I can split the army in two for that as well. Send you to Icel in advance, he'll reinforce the max strength. Ugh. Yep, yeah, he's a co-belligerent. Then again, I don't take that much aggressive expansion. 14... Yeah, it's not very much at all. So I could do that. Without suffering, it seems. So I can make Delcadia a state. And it's a state that I'll have all cores on. So, from the start, it's good. And it'll increase my income quite substantially. Now this is already a state, since I own Hamid. Now this, not a state. And this is going to be a part of states as well. Oh yeah, I need to take a mission. Shit. Conquer the Levant or conquer Kafar. Kafar is... this here. That's occupied by Circassia. But I can go and conquer all of that. So I need to own Cyprus and such. And the Mediterranean ambition gives a bit of extra trade. Now that will give me claims on all of that. Now, oh, the Mamluks have a poor starting leader compared to us. We're going to be able to probably get to Tech Five before he gets to it, almost certainly, actually. You certainly... well, you're not old, let's be honest. But I would prefer you gain a bit. Ulma? Need a province. So I think we're high tax and a non-valuable trade good. I think this one here makes the bill. Wool is not a good trade good at all. Late game, I think it's pretty much worthless. Silk and cotton, on the other hand, a bit more worthful. And so on. So they can have that, and be happy again. First idea group will be humanist, I think. Do I want to focus admin? I might need to. Like, I'm currently focusing on military and I didn't actually, I wasn't aware of that. I don't think I need to. And I could take advisors. That is something I need to consider. You will move to Icel and siege that there in place of him. He can move off it once you are there. So, there are, there are some areas of unrest, but they're likely not going to be of concern. Now, Constantinople is now a very good province. It's very much worth what it is. It only produces grain, which is not brilliant. But, ah oh well. So, my objective, I guess, for the recent short-term expansion will be Unite Antilia, as I've already said. And, in all honesty, I can go up to speed 5 and just let these sieges finish. Now, conquering the Levant is going to be a possible thing, I think. Now, how long did claims last for? 50 years, I believe? I am going to take that mission. So, that puts me at odds and ends with the Mamluks. And these two are not part of the Levant? Hmm, alright. I like we take all of the claimed ones and try to separate these two, but I also do not want them taking it, so I might take those two and take the penalty for not having claims on them. Otherwise, though, I think I can take all of that quite easily, especially if the Mamluks are proving to be a weak nation.
Now, I know taking the Janissaire's decision gives big boost, a big boost early on, but I also know it can give a substantial issue later on with, I think, the Janissaire deca Decadence event? Is that what it's called? I believe it is. And, in all honesty, I might prefer to take the long-term hit rather than take that. But I am not certain. Either way, I'll end this episode here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.